Of course, I haven't met this commissioner alive in the town. Uh, you don't have me this place. <coughs> what, uh, let, let me just tell you what, what I th would like to do, and, and if you don't want to do this, you just correct me, right? Because I, I just want to get the conversation started. And uh, <coughs> so my, my area of the church is the volunteer and outreach initiative. told people last night we have we spent two hundred thousand dollars on the upstairs here we put in a bunch of bathrooms and showers for disaster uh, relief and, and teams coming to town and so forth so our, our commitment is is to the community and uh, we have always supported uh, we've always supported uh, <laughs> the uh, food through St. Paul's to Hope Mission and so forth, we, we do that. Um, and then um, this past year, we chose to support Lighthouse Community Church, which Gabby is a member of. And we spent a fair amount of time and some money helping them expand their facilities. And they feed 100 families uh, every two weeks. It's about 400 people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, during Florence, we, uh, Reverend Taylor, uh, he headed up the um, free food for the entire, this end of the county. We had lots of people for weeks. Uh, so we're, we're committed, we're committed to the, to the county and whatever we can do. Now, we can't finance everything. We're not, we're not even going to try that. Uh, but in the, in the course of last fall, as we got involved with Veteran Services of the Carolinas, which uh, Brandon and, and uh, Benji and Barry, right? Yes, sir. And Jen are part of. Chuck. We, hey, Chuck. We, uh, we realized that, you know, there's, there's a lot of needs in terms of homelessness. And, uh, you know, I, I guess some of us have never paid a lot of attention to it. In other words, listening to it every day, like Benji and, and Jen do. Um, but we've we learned out of working with Veteran Services of the Carolinas on, on raising money to buy material. I mean, meaning backpacks and sleeping bags and some Coleman stoves and some Coleman heaters. We spent about four thousand dollars doing that, and we realized that maybe there was a lot more that we should do. And um, we also support Family Promise. Chuck's mm -hmm. been a primary uh, sponsor of that for the church for a, a long, long time. So, you know, we're just kind of getting our feet wet. And we thought uh, about a month ago that what we would like to do is to explore are there solutions to the homelessness in Carteret County? And I, I don't know very much, okay? And I don't have any solutions, but what I'd like to do today is to get us to kind of focus on what do we know what the needs are? And that Doug's here, if he, could, if he could help us video that, and then we'll, as we talk more privately, we'll turn the camera off, because, you know, I don't, Ann Street doesn't want to be committed to trying to fix it, okay? That's not the charter that Outreach has right now. Our thing is to explore it, and, and then, uh, hey, Aura, uh, and then decide with other community partners how we would fix it. So we said, okay, wow, well, if we're going to do that, we don't know anything about it, maybe we could get uh, Brandon Wilson and some of the people in veteran services to come, and they've come from uh, Asheville to be here. Uh, maybe they could help us uh, just explore this, not dictate to us a solution. They're not here to do that. But, but what, if, what can they do to educate us? Come on in. Here's a seat over here. Come on over here. Uh, <coughs> You have to sit the, next to the leader when you get. No, so. no, no, no. The leader's <laughs> done. <laughs> the, uh, 
The, uh, <coughs> but what can we do to get educated about what I call the prerequisites? What, and what I mean by that is, you know, if you're going to solve this, we all know it needs money. That's not where I'm going. It needs government cooperation. It needs state and usually federal funding of some sort, depending on what the kind of shelter it is. Um, and, and those are the prerequisites. No matter how hard you want to throw money at something, that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to understand what it is, what are the things that we have to do. Just like if you went to college, you know, biology 101, you had to have A, B, C, D, E before you could take biology 201, right? That's, that's what I think we should explore today. And there's no commitment on anybody's part to do anything beyond this. I would hope that if people around the table feel like they want to go further, then we should uh, figure out how to put together some kind of an alliance with a lot of church participation in this county and other agencies and so forth. So. Um, that's that's uh, what I think. What what do you all think is a start? Or what? Can we go around and yep. say who we are so sure. that we know who's you know? Who yeah, that's great. Work. Yeah, and and uh, and uh, we all want to thank Kurt. Uh, I'll I'll start by introducing Kurt. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and Kurt Berry, uh, we want to thank you, Kurt, for bringing uh, people together to the table. And uh, so uh, sure, I'll but uh, I'll I'll start. We'll go this way. Um, I'm Taylor Mills pastor here at Ann Street, and i um, just uh, honored to be with you, and it's great to see some familiar faces and make some new uh, new connections, too. So thank you all for your time. And I'm Beth Spivey, um, retired nurse here in the community, and uh, trying to fill up my retirement with <laughs> useful things. <laughs> but Beth, is, her passion, just like Gino's, is one of them is to start a Bible study in the Newport Correctional facility and that's a that's a big awesome. process they've got a bunch of volunteers i didn't, I didn't want to get started on that because okay. i want to stop i'll take a phone <laughs> tell them to about but to see it fits into homelessness when they come yeah. out if they're come out of incarceration exactly. they exactly. there's no place for them to go yeah. right so it fits okay. that mean it to me now yes sir yeah. <laughs> okay uh good afternoon everyone i'm commissioner cooper here in uh the beaufort uh, glad to be here because it is one of my uh, one of my passions in terms of homeless, homelessness. Uh, when I was uh, campaigning, it was on that that I felt there was a need for some sort of shelter here in uh, in Beaufort. And so uh, my mayor she introduced herself and she knew about that and invited me to uh, to attend this today. Thank you. My name is Sharon Parker. I'm the mayor for the town of Beaufort. Uh, I knew that this was going to be a big fit for Melvin because he has been going around door to door. <laughs> and it's also something that I am very concerned about because a lot of times people don't realize there's homelessness. I get so many individuals say to me, we don't have homeless in <laughs> And I have to really remind them as they sit on their little throne, yes they are here. <laughs> and my brother-in-law was one of them, so it has hit home and fairly personal. Everybody's story is a little bit different as to why they get to where they are. Sometimes we have to understand that. He just didn't want to come live with us or anybody else, so his rules were to live outside no matter what the weather was. Um, but there is a need to understand that. You have to be able to understand the trauma that's associated with it and why they're where they are. And then we can come up with a solution, as you're saying. But I think the first thing that we have to do is to recognize the fact that we do have homelessness. Um, and I hopefully that could be the big first step to getting alliances, um, and I would like to be part of that process. I know Melvin is definitely want to be part of that process and I'm here to help. Ken Winley, retired city and county manager, and uh, moved back to Beaufort about three years ago. Uh, I grew up in Beaufort, and uh, it's uh, <clears throat> it's always been a uh, close to my heart with uh, things that maybe in the past we needed to do and couldn't afford to do. But maybe there's a way to do it now and now's the time to think about it. And uh, with my knowledge that I have, especially as county manager here in Carteret County at one time, 
for eight years. Uh, maybe it's uh, uh, time to, to get on with it. Uh, it's going to be a bit difficult in rural counties getting them to step up big dollar money wise. Uh, most of the time, the shelters these days, especially in North Carolina, are in our more urban counties. And that's how the counties got involved because a lot of counties in North Carolina, you don't know where the border is between the county line, where the city starts, and, and so forth. So uh, uh, but we're going to have to deal with it in some fashion. And uh, that's where I hope uh, the knowledge and maybe even some contact that I have maybe it'll be of support. Ken is also the lay leader for the church. Mm -hmm. oh. oh yeah, um, Brandon Wilson, I am the Director of Veteran Services of the Carolinas. Um, uh, biggest thing I think, uh, what I want to try to do is wear a different hat today for you guys. Uh, our mother ministry is the Asheville Buncom Community Christian Ministry based out of Asheville, North Carolina. Um, we have been in this space, we operate now two residential facilities that are not low barrier. And I think it's important as we have this conversation today, we don't want to talk about low barrier shelters. My, my, we don't want that. What, what, does, what, that does, that what does that mean? You've got, to have a, you've got to have a shelter that is designed, that has a very rigid and strict tiered program that has a no tolerance for alcohol or drug while they're in the program. You have to be that clean. Because if you don't and you allow people to come in and be high and to not give them accountability and purpose and a new mission in life, you're going to create a bigger problem than you've got already. Right. And that's what we don't want to do because Beaufort is gorgeous. I love being down here. Barry and I come here and fish for 12 years. Now he lives down here. Plus um, it's a ripple effect that that happens because it's not just the patient that is the problem. It's that that triggers the other people that are in his room or next door because they smell the booze or whatever, and now it's multiplied. So, so uh, I'll move over to Gerald fast. But what I hope that I can do, because you guys have been really grateful and generous to our organization, we've come in to do homeless outreach in this community and get them enrolled in some other federal employment programs that we've got, um, is to wear this hat about the residential facilities that we have in Nashville, how we've, how we've created infrastructure and sustainability around that, using federal dollars, local dollars, but also really utilizing the churches. That's the secret sauce of what I want to really want to talk about on how you create something that's special and unique to really mitigate the problem you've got and not create a bigger problem. Because the one thing that we always have to remember is the taxpaying people of Beaufort, not all of them are going to want a homeless shelter here. And so we've got to be very cognizant of that because that's a lot of where your revenue comes in for the county and the city. Correct? And the mayor really is going to appreciate that statement because she gets squeezed. She's the Oreo here. She's got the hardest job of them all. And so I'm hoping that I can bring some perception for you guys. I can tell you what not to do. Uh, we're here to support with the programs that we've got, and we'll do anything that we can to support you in that, in that manner. And I'm more than happy to show you what our model is and what we've done in the past if that helps. So, uh, so I'm Jennifer Melton. I'm also with Veteran Services of the Carolinas. Uh, I work in a program called NC Serves, so uh, I just moved into a new role as uh, network coordinator, so I kind of help bring a lot of providers together to offer resources to our veterans. Um, specifically, Benji and I work directly with a lot of the homeless people here in Carteret County, so it, I, I hope that we can offer some insights um, because we do go in the woods and in the alleys and in the uh, well, I don't really go in the bad houses. Benji goes in the houses that nobody else wants to go in. Um, so I hope that we can offer some insights and we help to just connect. Uh, like Brandon was saying, we have several programs here in our county that we try to help our veterans connect to. But we don't leave people in the woods just because they're not veteran. We help everybody. We get them connected to other resources. So how many people are there? I believe we're about 65. Yeah, it's roughly 65. We've identified. That's what we've identified. We've got to understand. Homelessness is transient. Yeah. You know, you don't look at homelessness as someone couch surfing, but they are homeless. You don't count those people because we don't see them. Right. So it's a tremendous amount more than just 65. Yeah, for us, our standards, you know, we're talking about people who are literally street homeless in the woods and living in a place that's uninhabitable or a car. Um, like Ben just said, according to HUD guidelines, if you're couch surfing, you're not a homeless person. Though we all know. That's a homeless person. Right. You're living in a 
hotel, as long as you're paying for it yourself, you're you don't get the loan programs because you're technically able to afford a hotel, even though you don't so have a home. So I think. And I think that's to the point you were talking about earlier. We're talking about requirements and what the data actually shows and what we can do to be a part of that solution. Because we all know that your point in time camps that happen is our garbage. Yeah. Well, our you can't. It is, by now, zero. according to, to, to the government, you have zero homeless We have people. no homeless people. But yet, according to Benji and Jen and their team, they, they're working with 65 that are chronically homeless yeah. today. Yeah. So back up just yeah. real quick. Uh, so a point in time count, mm -hmm. 100 words, what is it? So the government sends out, and the VA does it, and the HUD does it as well. Um, one time a year, sometimes it's two days, but it's always in January, sends out a team of social workers, government employees, volunteers mm -hmm. to go out into the community and do a blitz for like a four or five hour blitz. And they do it at night, which is even more crazy because you're not going to find homeless at night. You do it at night to find out how many exactly homeless that you've got. Okay? And I'm going to talk about other ways within the continuums of care, which is another way that and the HMIS homeless management information system the state uses that we're a part of. Well, we can talk about some yeah. of that in a minute, so I don't want to go. But, but it's so the point is, is that it's like a, an audit and a it's survey. It's a count. It's a count. And you're straight up is, counting. Yeah. And without that, you're not qualified for Correct. any state. Well, yeah, it drives so dollars. It drives the federal yeah. dollars, drives dollars and programs. Right. 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 So the fact that we, that, that we have zero. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't help you. It doesn't help you. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you call in 65 every week. Right. Yeah. It's just because of the way the point in times we're operating for the last several years. Yeah, they're not very well designed as far as how they strategically happen. And okay. so we've kind of come on the scene and helped, like in Wilmington. And I've brought a team down twice down to Wilmington. We don't even have staff there yet. We're in the process of hiring. but um, and, and so, like, they wanted us to start... At like three in the morning, and their theory was is that you'll catch them when they're waking up. But I'm thinking you're going to catch a bullet, is what you're going to catch. <laughs> you know, and these people are living in the woods, and, and the, they don't want to be found, right? And you're banging on their tent at four a.m. It's not going to go well. So we started at like six, and, and we still almost call them over. We still almost and still almost caught. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Really. That's right. And we could talk about I, I don't yeah. I don't no, want to wrap it up. Yeah. So one keep question it. is the sixty five that you mentioned veterans or is that something? No, it's no. civilian and, and veterans, veterans together, yeah. yes yeah. So we didn't go over what our program is. Twenty veterans. Twenty veterans. Twenty veterans. Yeah. Have been identified. Yes. yes. Identified. They're yes. called in by veteran services of the Carolinas. Yeah. Supported. Yeah. All right. Do you know? Well, my name is Gina Rossi. just a concerned citizen. The Lord put it on. Oh, he's my heart. Too. He also organized. If you guys don't know, there is a homeless coalition of Carteret County, and Gino is the driving force behind the homeless coalition. And we meet uh, once a month, and we're working on some pretty big plans. But it's difficult, which is so it's good that we're all in this room uh, because it's been difficult to get some of those parts moving. But he's he's the driving force behind the homeless coalition. Mark, I do. Pool is really nonprofit organization in our community as I can, at least to get their names as a contact, sure. so we have a reference point for a reach to somebody that can help in a location or another. And a couple of the big ones are like the Salvation Army and Rod Street and Hope Mission, who are very concerned about the county and the homeless people. And Benji and Jen have been a big part of it since my start actually been with my first contact. I was going to say, poor Jinda, that you're being mighty humble over there about your involvement in what you do. You've been an amazing asset to have. Hey. It's your turn. It's your turn. I just thought he was going to talk. I'm Jan Maston. Pardon me? Okay. Jan Maston. I'm finance chair of Ann Street Church and very interested in how we can help, what we can do. My name is Benji. Um, born and raised here in Beaufort and never realized how many homeless there were. Um, I, I was blessed with an opportunity to work with Veteran Services of the Carolinas as a peer support specialist. I use my lived experiences to try to help other homeless 
recover from whatever serious mental illness they have, substance abuse, or just need somebody to be there for them. Um, I go through the woods, railroad, wherever someone might be that has nowhere to call home. Um, help give them a hand up, not a hand out. You know, we're there for them, meet them where they're at, and uh, bring them closer to a sense of normalcy that they see. Um, we just provide the arena to get there for them. You know, we don't make a decision for them. We don't change their mind if they want to stay homeless. But what we did is, through Mr. Kirk, he's helped with tents, with sleeping bags. Um, there's so many things that we take for granted, but for them, it's survival. It's the little necessities that give them a chance to make it through the night. Um, so I've become very passionate about it. And like everybody said, we've, we've identified 65 just in Carter County. Some just to know about Benji, he just recently took our position with the, he's one of our assistant directors now at our organization. And I don't even think Benji knows this, but he is now going to be responsible and is going to be operating the largest outreach program in North Carolina. Not just for that. <laughs> Barry started the program, and we're, we're demoting him to clinical director. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Gabby. I work at Loaves and Fishes. I wear a lot of hats there, so I'm not going to go into that. Kurt knows that. Um, I'm also a career support specialist. Um, I was homeless for many years and because of my own choices. Um, but I was fortunate enough to have many people help me out of that. So this is awesome. I'm excited to see all that we can do for the county. Good. Good. My name is Oriel Homan. I'm a member of Ann Street. I served as chair of outreach for many years and we saw homelessness after forms. Um, I also work on the board of Loaves and Fishes and um, the, the men that come out of the program, a lot of them have no place to go. They're homeless. And it is a struggle trying to connect them with a place to live because there's nowhere affordable in Carteret County. Um, we have one right now, um, Shorty. People know Shorty. He's living with a church member and has for two years. Um, and that's um, semi-permanent for the time being, but he's basically homeless. I mean, if it turns out that his present living situation can't continue, he, he doesn't have anywhere to go. So the men coming out of the program, a halfway house with stringent rules is so needed in this mm -hmm. county because they need that step. Um, before I retired, my career was um, 10 years at social services and multiple years after that with DHHS. I'm familiar with um, Medicaid and the disability process um, that's uh, for individuals that are homeless or trying to go through programs who are disabled. It's um, a mound of paperwork and a very long and complicated process but in Shorty's case, we did finally achieve success, um, and he did get disability. He's a dwarf, um, and he did get disability. So I'm available to help people with that process. I can understand the lingo of the paperwork um, after all those years. So that's basically it. I'm Barry Murphy. Uh, I thought I was promoted to our clinical director. <laughs> 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 yeah, I need to check my bank. Um, I'm, I'm Barry Murphy. I'm clinical uh, director for, our, for Veteran Services of the Carolinas. Um, to your point, I worked for DSS for five years when I was about to go into grad school. And what she's talking about as far as uh, the social security disability process, for, for my whole career I've played around with that. And when you get somebody who's not really functioning so great, that to have somebody that can help navigate that's very valuable. But at any rate, after that I worked for the VA for a decade and um, 
and I live right up here on Queen Street, and you came to my house when you were campaigning. <laughs> we shook hands. <laughs> Ask him if I voted for you. I did. Right this time. <laughs> and let me apologize right now. Face is most of it. Queen and Pine. Well, you know, yeah, I, I know what I know yeah, how yeah, because yeah. I came to you a second time. You did to say. I wasn't able to really log on and try to log on to, yeah, yeah. Uh, to the website. Yeah, because we, I, we, I gave you my card. don't worry about it. Oh, yeah, something like, yep. you know. Well, here we are. Okay. My question, is the cameraman going to introduce himself? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm Doug Gilchrist, and I get called on to do a lot of Kurt's uh, field work for him. <laughs> 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 um, I hear the term, terms of rigid and I understand the, the need for that. But at the same time, how we get them from where they're as substance abuse. There is some programs I know here in Carteret County, uh, not so much in terms of, of both of them. And I, I was surprised in trying to navigate the ins and outs of trying to find out who is homeless and what programs are available. Those officials did come up a lot. Or they said that mostly along the substance abuse thing. Uh, so, but I know because I ran into a few when I was out campaigning, mm -hmm. and they did have substance and some mental abuse. So, what do we do for those? Thank you. Know? And commission, before we, uh, I hate to interrupt you, but we did have we do have he didn't oh, see sorry. one more gentleman back here. I'm sorry to see him in, back the, back. in the corner. I don't know what I can contribute. I tell you who I am. My name is Chuck Lewis. I'm a local yokel. Raised here, I worked here in the school system. Um, the principal. I was a principal, and I really, the last half of my career, got turned on to early childhood education, a pro, a developmentally appropriate education, not the way I went to school, which I didn't like, but the way we know kids learn, and we're going right back. We go in cycles, so that's been a. Um, something for me, the young kids, and um, to see the haves and the have-nots. You can pick them out mm -hmm. when they bring their, when the parents bring the kids to kindergarten first day. We can pick them out um, and try to break that cycle. Uh, and education to me is the only way. Now I got involved in uh, Family Promise. Had a good friend, went to Baptist Church in Moorhead. He wanted me to sell some tickets to raise money for Family Promise. So I went over there, I saw what they were doing, and I said, hey, we can do it better than that. <laughs> we got everything right here in this facility to do a great job. Remember, it takes 650 man hours for one week at this church to host Family Promise. And, um, they are drug free, alcohol free. They had to go through that. We cannot have somebody have problems or even um, they're trying to run away from a abusive spouse or something like that. We, we can't have them because we're an old church, old time, we're retired. And uh, the people I get to stay at night is a man and a woman and his wife or two women would come and stay at night. We'd come here, the kids and the families would come here about six o'clock. We had parents up or church members to cook them a meal. And we all get around, we pray together, and uh, we get to know the kids a little bit. Uh, then we had the pandemic. We couldn't host anymore. So I met this men and we got a lot of a lot of people who were involved in that uh, got bunks and we put it in the center of the morning. And I remember they would come here at 5 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning. We had a man down there in a van to take them over to Moorhead, 6.30 in the morning. And we're talking infants, mm -hmm. young school age kids because we needed a central place for the uh, buses to take them to school so it'd be something regular uh, routine for these kids. Um, one of the best things, um, 
Like I said, it's 650 man hours, the hostel. And unfortunately, it's the same ones <laughs> doing it. You know, I wish I had a had a way to spread it around all our members. It'd be an eye opener. And you can be very judgmental in some of these people. You know, I've had one mother who had seven kids and was pregnant. And um, and she's homeless. Yeah. And she's homeless. And homeless. Does everybody know what loads and fishes is? I mean, not loads and fishes, family but family problems. Problems. <laughs> It's homeless women and their children. Homeless women and their children. How many people are in the center now? Is it like nine or ten? Uh, I think around nine. nine. So it is a residential facility. Right. It's a residential facility in downtown Moorhead. Mm -hmm. And a man rents it to them, to the organization, and will sell it. It's almost the entire block. And one of the goals is to buy that property for a half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And there's some, there's plenty of space to put four or five small homes. And our goal would be to transition to a shelter or a home that we still got some control over. You know, we're, we're teaching them parenting skills. We're trying to get them educated. We work in with Carter Community College. Uh, we help them with jobs, uh, all those things. Finances. Finances, uh, we find mm -hmm. out that, you know, they're, they're, all, they're supplemented their, their income is supplemented, and uh, they we can sit down and budget and find you got enough money to go find a place, but they are few and far between. And I don't know, and I've got some ideas, you know, shelters or homes. You got to remember that the haves do not want the have nots to live little. Okay, okay, we know, we know. so. You know, um, so that's got to be considered. Where you put these <coughs> these people has got to be considered. It can be a pretty a bad situation, or it so come back to situation. what we want to do today. Don't you get signed? How do we want to start Don't. this conversation? Don't. How do we sign? Yeah. Can, can we should just make a recommendation yeah. on something. So this isn't just unique to both. It's not. There's other, a lot of other rural counties across the, the state that are dealing with the same thing. We've seen, I've been a part of co commissions, coalitions that have been successful, and I've had some that's been not so successful. Um, so what I would recommend is one of the first things you want to do, honestly, is you want to create a strategy, you want to have several strategy sessions in the community. You have to. To piggyback on a coalition that you already have established. Who do you invite to? The community. You invite the community to this. This is when it gets a little ugly, but it's, a, it's out of necessity, okay? You need to invite the community to this. Everybody in, in, in this community that actually provides services needs to be at these strategy sessions. <coughs> Through these strategy sessions, you want to talk about what the problem is. What is it that Family Promise does? What do they provide? You need to sketch this out on a board. What do Loaves and Fishes do? What does Hope Mission do? What does all the, what does Ann Street Church do? What is You've got to break it down to get an idea of A, where your resources are versus where the problem is. During that process of three to four to five strategy sessions twice a month over a couple months, it's a slow roll. You want to do it right. You find out who wants to be a part of the coalition, who needs to be a part of the coalition, and who needs to be a part of that are the people in your community that are doing the work. And this is when it gets hard because this is where communities fail. I don't, you know, if... If my organization, let's just call it Brandon Wilson's Shop of, you know, <laughs> Chia Pets, let's say my organization does the same work that Barry Murphy's, you know, Office of, you know, Rollerblades does. There's some ego stuff that goes on right there. If he's not a part of the solution, but he helps 150 people a year, this community is going to fail. We have to have, we have to set our egos aside. We have to have everybody that does something at the table, from the county and city to the nonprofits 
to DSS, to the community college, everybody that's providing an aspect. And what you do in those strategy sessions is you figure out which ones we want to hit, right? Education is one because it makes it prevention, right? Proactive, and you, you want to end generational poverty. So education is a big part of that component. Now, you may not do that. And Street may not do that, but Family Promise does do that. So that's that. That's where we gain their strengths. Then you've got to figure out what else you want to do. It's affordable housing. Okay, you could look at affordable housing a lot of different ways. Affordable housing to me is permanent supportive housing. Okay, so when you think about affordable housing, you can attack that because we need more affordable homes. That is a big piece of the pie that's hard to gap. gap right. What you can do is flip that upside down because if you could pay somebody twenty one, twenty two dollars an hour. They might be able to afford something now, right? Not that there's not enough units, because there's never going to be enough units, but you now have the opportunity to put people in the units. Okay. Right? Stop right there for a second. So I'm just saying that yeah. you want to be able to, to right. tear down. Right. I think it's, it's great, but I, I want to give people the chance. And Oreo, would you break out the water that's behind you? It's hot in here. I apologize for whatever's happening with the air. But, but what do you think of the, of the brand name? I think what he's saying is uh, spot on. As I was originally uh, coming out with, uh, oh, thank you. Uh, in going around and asking questions, and then hearing people here at this table, it's like it's a secret. I didn't know you guys were in. I was having all of these various programs going on in the county, and I never knew the name of you, or just right here in Beaufort. I mean, it's like it's a well kept secret because I've been asking, and people are like, oh, <laughs> There's a problem here in Boulder as well as probably in Carteret County as well. But to shake that tree and find out where the things are, I mean, it's like I take off the bank. Head. There's a bank here with million dollars. Right. Nobody knows. Let me take off on that for a minute. One, and I don't mean this. I'm, I'm new here. I've only been here seven years, so I'm the newbie. Okay. Oh, you want to hit dots. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't think you made this up yet. I don't think you made this up. No. And I, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on top of that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, but what I'm getting at is, let, let me use a, an example. I, in the time I've been here, I don't see churches working together. It's amazing to me how provincial that is. Now, I came from Richmond, Virginia. I lived there 45 years. Our solution, and I'm not saying do this because this is not where we're going, but our solution to housing homeless people was about 30 years ago, we started with 14 churches providing uh, overnight stays, providing meals, lunches, and then we would take them, we take homeless people back down. There's only 14 churches. Today, there's over 187. And a, and a, a thousand people a year are served by that. But only because those churches band together. 14 attracted 30 more. And that's part of that's part of what we've got to break down. We've got churches in town that love doing their own thing. That's okay. But it doesn't, it dilutes down what we're doing, or trying to do, let's put it that way, trying to do, and I, so I'll stop there. ABCCM makes a lot of the same things, so it's a collective responsibility, I appreciate it. 300 churches support ABCCM. Well, wow. that's in Asheville. It's in Asheville, yeah. and it's, a, it's Buncombe County Churches. Uh -huh. That's your secret sauce in all of this, mm -hmm. is the churches. You create, you can create capital through, uh, through grants, through DHHS. There's money right now in Raleigh that they're just they're giving out, right? You can create capital around that. The problem that you got to have is sustainability of that and programming of that. What happens in, in ABCCM is we're supported by 300 churches. ABCCM is a $17 million a year faith-based nonprofit. Now we add on grants, federal, state, local, to supplement, to build capacity, to pay staff. But who, what keeps the lights on when grants don't come through? The churches do. They've committed themselves five years, ten years, twenty years for either a financial. Some churches give fifteen percent. Some churches give twenty percent toward this entity. Okay. 
If they can't give, they give volunteers. We're also supported by over 10,000 unique volunteers a year. When you figure that out times $20 an hour, because that's the going rate in grants, you figure out if you have 10,000 volunteers and they work 10 hours a year, you do the math on that, that's your force multiplier. And these aren't volunteers that are just serving meals at the soup kitchen. Those are extremely important. These are doctors, retired financial accountants, mm -hmm. that are giving their time to programs and to services that is the force multiplier of this. So it's great if you build it, they will come, but how do you keep it going? Your churches is where this is at, and quite frankly, as a Christian, you're not going to do anything with that Lord's support. You've got to have the Lord's blessing on this. And so by keeping Him at the forefront of everything that we do, every decision that we make, the community can and will win in that in that but you've got to be able to set aside those those egos. Mm -hmm. The problem that we're having right now in one specific county is you've got three organizations that wants to be ABCCM. They want to be the entity. Mm -hmm. Because if you've got three transitional shelters, and that's something else, we don't want to call them halfway houses. We want to call them transitional houses. Why? Because she is going to get a phone call about a halfway house. Yeah. She may not get a phone call about a transitional house. It's two different meanings in the, in the brain, right? And so we have to understand that perception is reality when we talk about the homeless population. So, you know, we have three in Haywood County, or I won't say Haywood County, A County, that there's three different transitional shelters that are doing the same thing. And they've come to the table. But you've got three executive directors, you've got three program assistants, you've got three peer supports, and now what you're saying is, we all, you all of you need to form one, right? And now there's only going to be one executive. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think those other two are going to say? So you, you've got to be able to accept that, right? Can I ask you a question? Um, you, you guys uh, have a, a city-based uh, program in the greater Asheville area, maybe, something like that? Yeah. Or, do you, or does it serve the whole county? Or it serves the whole county. The whole county. Okay, some of our programs are only city-centric, like our medical ministry, where we provide medical services, we have a free pharmacy, okay. no drugs. Do you recommend that, that we look at a buffer? Center um, kind of a outfit here or a county? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You know you're or are you here. local? I mean, local folks, do you? Yeah. I can tell you from my experience in the woods in the county and working with all the incredible providers that it needs to be a county wide mission. Mm -hmm. And exactly. it's the hardest thing in the world to do because, like Brandon said, You've got egos here, mm -hmm. egos here. My mm -hmm. idea is better. My idea. It's not about you. Yeah. It's about the people we want to serve. I think and another point is that if you look at our county, it's what sixty-three. It's a long It's a long a banana, right? Yeah. We got pockets. We got yeah. Newport, Warren City, Beaufort, but we have, we've got yeah. very yeah. long yeah. Yeah. And, 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 right? and, and so one little part <clears throat> in the and, you, and you give more teeth to it, yeah. right? If it's just no disrespect toward the city of Beaufort, yeah. but there's only so much you can do. Yeah. County commissioners can do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Newport can do a little bit more. Morehead City can do a little bit more. So if everybody has a smaller piece of the pie, overall, it's a bigger, it's a bigger robust old. So these know, strategy audience. sessions of getting together, it's like you're talking about, um, we, we need to be thinking in terms of county and town, uh, but buy all, all county, town, buy it, across the town. And, that, and understand this, because I know that municipalities, a lot of municipalities don't have a lot of money. That's not what you're after with them. You're after support. Mm -hmm. Right? They're, you're after support mm -hmm. in a way that they, they can view the media, right? You want them to put the right twist on what you're trying to do, and municipality leadership can help frame that a little bit. So what like, you call that programmatic? Is yeah. that your... Yeah. So what, what would fall into that? Right? So you've got, you've got programs. You've got programs right here above that are crushing it. You're a lot further ahead than you think you are. You have loaves and fishes. You've got hope mission. You've got family promise, but you're all—all all three of them are working in silos. Yep. They're working inside, and then that's fine. It works if you're helping people. You're doing the work. But what would happen if you all were to join a little bit closer together? I'm not saying all to disbar and have one organization. That's what we did in Asheville 52 years ago, right? 52 years ago we did that. So I'm not saying you should do that, but there needs to be a tighter collaborative and a coalition like you're talking about that meets monthly to, 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 to staff, to consult, to talk about what's what. That way, if you do food really, really well and clothing, and you do food and clothing really well, but you want to do clothing well, stop doing clothing. Let him do clothing. You do food. 
And now you're sharpening your sword to be the best of the best of the best of that one entity. That's what we're talking about being able to do here. Don't wear all the hats. Wear a couple hats that you're really good at and shift all that other work to another organization that wants to do those really good yeah. things. Kurt, what do you, um, I, went, I was able to go to a few many um, sets of Florence, but not as many, but you've tied in with, uh, some of you all maybe already oh, tied in with. Long-term recovery? Uh, no, well, there, there's that, there's that too, but also there's an even, uh, there's a county-wide Monthly meeting of no, the nonprofit no, Crystal no. Coast. The Crystal Coast, not that. They didn't do the first year with COVID. Yeah. And they lost a lot of their. Yeah, it was COVID they, really. We have 125 uh, members, but it's not really active. And I I reached them just last month. Yeah. yeah. And I was invited to their next Zoom meeting. Yeah, which is tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I get the emails. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not. Get us I'll get up on my But I think it's, it's when you look at the membership, it, I think it's a really great membership. It's got lots of agencies, it, you know, but but it, it's not all that active. And there's only a couple churches <clears throat> that are on it. Uh, so I think we can draw on it. I don't think, I, I don't think know of any real be programs. built on. Yeah. I think it yeah. could grow. Right. A lot. Mm -hmm. If some of the nonprofits would mm -hmm. support it as it is, mm -hmm. uh, I know that when I talk to them, that say in in church in street searches on it as a nonprofit, but you can click on it and take a link, hyperlink to your web page. Mm -hmm. Now they used to charge you for that. Mm -hmm. Since COVID, there's no charge mm -hmm. for that. And I've been trying to reach out to people. Take advantage of this. Get on there. there. Use their link and build your yeah. nonprofit. And this thing could grow. It's a yeah. wonderful web page that, that I think every nonprofit in this county should be a member of. Right. Right. I think I think some of the strengths that are in that, for example, food is uh, food is one. Uh, and there's a person who's trying to get uh, people to buy from local farmers. And so the farmer's market is a big thing. We were at it twice a month. We sell $10,724 worth of peanuts and give it back to the community a year. So that's, that's part of it. Loaves and Fishes has a big food program. You still have two, uh, two, two uh, Yeah, food the sites. one in Harker's Island um, once a month, and then we do ours every Monday. Okay. And both are. Right. And, and, they, and they have uh, backpack blessings that feed uh, through the ch churches. There's 40, this is a, a good example. They feed 150 children anonymously every weekend, 39 weeks a year. And the churches support it. It costs $30,000 a year. And it's, it's organized and funded by the churches, right? Mainly, yeah. But to the, to the, to the commission. Yeah. 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 To your point. Yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> how do we know about that? <laughs> to your I'm point. Yeah, how do we know? I did that. How do we know? Just you know, getting ready to do that. Just me sitting team. here, Check just me up. sitting here listening to this. And my dog in the fight is, my team is doing outreach, right? Sure. So I want you to know this is all just free advice. We've got idea. Um, a way that you can really gain teeth in this is if you were to say, we're going to create a task force to address the homeless issue in Beaufort. Just start small and have your councilmen and women, hell, have them charge them with appointing people to this task force, right? Hold them accountable over a six month period. Their job is to research, find data, what the problems, what the issues are, and then get the right people to, the, to that program to figure out and create a plan, a strategic plan over an 18 month, 12 month, two month, whatever you want to do with it, to, to address this situation in the capacity. And you, as the mayor, are, are in charge of this. Gives it teeth. Let your councilmen and women pick out who needs to be at this table at this task force. Keep in mind, you also need to have previously homeless individuals on this. You can't not invite them to the table. Diversity and inclusion can't. You gotta invite them to the dance, you can invite them to the dance, but you also gotta let them dance, right? So having their voice there. Fishers and Lovis de facto need to be there. Hope Mission de facto has to be there. Family Promise has to be there. But other or other community partners, business owners, you need to have business owners there. So you can create this task force and charge them 
with this is over the next 12 months this is what I expect you need to meet monthly you're going to report back to me and tell me where you're at in your process to build a strategy to, to address this issue in the city of Beaufort and if you're doing that here and you're eight nine ten months down the road you're starting to gain some momentum and energy now you can knock on the door of the county commissioners and say look what we're doing y'all want to be a part of this then you can grow it to a larger level and I can promise you if Moorhead sees you doing that yeah. They're going to hop on board. They're going to hop do on board. They're going to hop on board. They're going to hop on board. They're not going to hop on it yeah. if they don't see it happen. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. that's, exactly that's right. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. That's easy. People follow a leader. I remember after, the same thing after with Florence, that. we held up. We were, you know, so affected by the housing crunch with so many, all the apartment complexes, you know, kicked everybody out. You guys, some of y'all were right there along that. And we held the housing fair down in the, in the fellowship hall. And, uh, and we got um, we got uh, participation from uh, the realtors and the association and the um, county uh, housing department, and uh, they were real supportive and uh, real helpful. And there were some people who were invited that you know didn't uh, didn't kind of get in, involved and plugged in, and and uh, but but that was an example of. Um, Something that you know, where Beaufort led the way. I don't think anybody else in the county was really like. And it's and just lessons learned. If you decide to do it like a task force, which I that's what my recommendation would be to start having strategy sessions around, is you can't. You're not gonna make everybody happy. This task force can't be 30 people. That's not a task force. It's not a working group, right? It's got to be very narrowed down. 11 tops. Tops. 11 people. Because it's got to be workable. It's got to be functional. Everybody's gonna have opinions. But you've got to have people who know how to work through that, facilitate that, and get results going, and know how to run a project through. But I think if you started there and include the people we talked about at this table, somebody with lived experiences, business business owners in Beaufort, uh, church churches have to be a part of this. Then you're going to start figuring out. Let the experts in the room do what they do best. You get them all in the room, get them talking about it. They'll figure it out. They're smart. It's, it's exciting to think of, of Beaufort leading the way. I don't, I don't want to uh, no sign you off, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it's yeah, but it's, but uh, you know for the for the county to be able to see that because uh, would be um, a real feather in you know in Beaufort's uh, cap, I guess. That's, okay. Beaufort's led the way in a lot of things. Yeah. 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 You need to control the narrative, yeah. man. And I'm I'm just being honest. Control the narrative. Because it can go, I've seen it happen. All of a sudden, you have 25 business owners that's beating their drum and beating up the chest and yeah. upset and mad because now all of a sudden there's a rumor that there's going to be a low barrier halfway house on Front Street. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're going to lose their mind. <laughs> Perception's reality, yeah. right? And rightfully so. Yeah. We want to respect them just as much as we try to respect the people that are serving. So it's really important that the task force understand that you have to control. I think we have a, kind of a, a model that happened after Florence with a, a Carteret County long-term recovery. Yep. That we came together after Florence within a couple of months over in the, uh, the Civic Center. And there were probably 40 or 50 organizations there. Yep. We came out of that restoring as best we could homes and restored 73 homes spent several million dollars in organization but it and now it's smaller but it's still operational and they're still working on working on homes and trying to get grants and so i think it isn't like we can't do it we just need to apply it to this topic especially because we saw after the county came together right yeah, yeah. right because all of our people were coming yeah. yeah. in our county not even so obviously our county can do it. It's just getting it in the back of the table. Yeah, yeah. Think that that the crisis will pull you together. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. crisis is more competitive. Yeah. yeah. Or don't more people don't think about right. this issue. And people don't realize there is homelessness. Yeah, yeah, they don't. Yeah. And bringing that to the forefront along with your message of the people. You know, I, I can't tell you how many have come to me. I didn't know that anyone here. Right. We hear that all the time. Oh. Actually, 
Like, do I come in the woods? I'll show you where they live. Um, <laughs> but in your strategies, I will start with your strategies. That's going to identify who you can have as a part of the task force. And if you let, if you yourself and the city council and men and women appoint it, you're making them work for the living, right? That, that's what we voted them in for. I did very good. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're friends with my neighbor. <laughs> I hear, I, we all I hear that. Yes, yeah. right. I do hear what you're saying. Uh, and a lot of times, my thing is always if there's always, if, if there's already a wheel rolling, mm -hmm. uh, not to come in and try to replace that That's wheel. Right. So my thing is, is, I don't at what point you guys is rolling with this. Now this but is, just, is, this is there a need for us to, to assist in that or take the lead in that? I would say to take the lead in that. We'll support you. And this is nothing going on. This is the first step. Okay? And, and you just very well walk away and say, we're not going to do it anymore. And it's not putting you guys, make you do more work. You get to appoint, you have these strategy sessions, and you appoint them, and then you walk away. Now the community's accountable. The community's accountable to you. Because you, if you've said, hey, we believe in you, we want you to see this table, now the experts figure it out, and we'll go back and do what we do. When you get to a solution, let us know. But the whole time, you're going to support this. You're going to move forward with this. And that's what the people needs to hear. That is, isn't just loaves and fishes and family promise getting together. This is the municipality coming together as a part of this. And it's sort of leading this initiative. It's true. There is a different clout when it has, you know, the town's uh, sure. uh, uh, letterhead, 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 letterhead on it or something like that. <laughs> or, a, or, a, or a proclamation. Is there a prototype, written prototype, about the protocol for a traditional house that's like a manual or direction? I mean, is that, <laughs> you don't have to, there is none? You could probably find some. They're all different. I, I know. There's not like a. I remember going to a commissioner's meeting at a little while after performance, and there was a, a doctor in Moorhead City who was uh, trying to get a. Um, a, a, a facility started, and he was. Does anybody remember the name or know about that? Well, I thought Somebody there was one in Morehead. Yeah, but there was, and there was a guy. He was trying to start a treatment center, and uh, and with housing, and 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 all the commissioners. He he had reached out to all of them, and and I could tell just sitting in the audience that they had already made up their minds yeah. and about him and his proposal and all this kind of stuff, and and so. They they politely listened until this time was up, and then they went on to the next thing. So it, I'm not saying I'm not trying to get throw cold water, but um, but there there will be things to figure out, you know, about who, that's the task about, force about yeah, yeah yeah. You know, we so I guess what I'm saying is there's there's no prototype, but we would have to start from square one in establishing what um, transitional housing Carter County is going to look like, what the rules are going to be. Yeah that we have because there's none others in operation that already have that done. We can go, well, go to Asheville and yeah. okay, well, that's between a couple of us come yeah. up with yeah, but I was off the asked for like a specific guy. I mean, I'm, I'm more than happy to share anything. If it helps the community. So it's not written in a manual, it's just kind of understood. Yeah. One thing that helped start CTLRA was uh, my friend Phil Triplett from, uh, from Raleigh was there. He was the, like, uh, uh, state emergency, emergency services. services person. You know? So, is there a would y'all recommend in your work or, or you, you know, commissioners or you know, or mayor? You know, have you, any of y'all connected with who who at the state level might come do uh, how tos or workshops or okay, oh, <laughs> <laughs> or you don't want to? Yeah, well, no, it's not a matter of that. So, we've got along the North Carolina coalition. Also, my well, advisory okay. committee for the Veterans Affairs. Yeah. We have staff that are a member of every COC across the union, and that's like that a part of that. The issue at hand is, is the, the work gets done at the local level. Local. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I'm just being real. I can I could have somebody from the state come and tell you something. But it has to be local. It's garbage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. You're right. intelligent people right. in this room right. can right. figure it out. Now, when you get to, you get to where you have questions. Mm -hmm. on certain things, then yes. 
bring that in. But this community is more Focus unique than Asheville, than Rogers, okay. and Charlotte. So there's no sense in starting to try to cart before the horse, right? Okay. Yeah. You let you 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 get to guide what this community needs. Cool. Don't let the state dictate that to you. Okay. Yeah. Because I argue it's with them all the time. If we if, if if we were going to do this, it would seem to me that we're painting a, a very large picture which scares people. Okay. I think it would be interesting to do just two parts of this strategy, and it would be the fundamental for the other things. I would, I would like to see us uh, come out with what the resources are that are already here in the county, okay? Just like we've been talking about. Get that down on paper. What do we have here? Who runs them? How do we get a hold of them? I can get you that list whenever you want. Okay. And the other thing is, to try to uh, get a picture of, of homelessness as a group of people understand it in this county, okay? In other words, we don't have those counts, but we know there's 65 here, we know Lowe's and Fishes has got 10, we know uh, that Hope Mission has got some number, 10, 20, 30, I, no I don't know. I have mine. <laughs> there are, so let's get a picture. Let's. Let's get that picture as we think it is today. If we did those two things and stopped, and then said, "Okay, what do we, what do we do from here?" I, th I, I think we can paint this picture too big that we won't, we won't get people to help us get it done, or it's too big to swallow. I don't know. What, what do you think? Well, just sitting here and gathering information. Um from a town's perspective, most people will not do anything unless they see there's a need. So the need would come from your services saying, look, we are inundated with people who are homeless all the time. You come to the council, you tell me that. We've got another facility saying, you know what, because we're different than they are, we're having a bunch of homeless individuals coming into our, our area that we're having to facilitate. So as you bring this narrative forward, it's not just me saying, hey, you know, I've just been to a meeting and I've heard about this, let's go ahead and start a commission. You're going to build <clears throat> more credibility for me to be able to do that by coming to me and saying, here's what my need is. Because I really don't know what your needs are. You're in it day in and day out. You've got to tell me about your perspective, how you got to where you are. And what is it that you need from us? So the ask has got to be there. If it's there, then we can go ahead and determine if we are going to put a group together. And we do this all the time with other projects. And this is not just a project, this is somebody's life. Mm -hmm. It also helps us understand the fact of affordability. And I've said this a thousand and one times, of homes. The lack of affordable housing does create homelessness. It's just a, a vicious circle. And the people who have a tendency to pay the price on that are children. So we've got to bring that into play. We don't really need to have a family with infants running around because they're not in the streets doesn't necessarily mean that they're not homeless. And there are also people who go to work that are homeless. So we also need to identify that too. And I know a That's few a very, very good point. Um, I have two camps over in Moorhead, work every day. Mm -hmm. But they live in the woods because they cannot afford an apartment or a house. That's right. But they do work. They don't have substance abuse problems. They don't have mental health problems. They live an every normal day life. They don't have a vehicle. They ride a bike to work every day. And that's very true. Yeah. So I know two people who do that. And I'm from New York City, folks. So I've seen a lot of this all of my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, my family, we were evicted once and had to walk from Westbury to Mineola to get a voucher. So I've, I've seen it, I've been there, and I've done it as well. And I don't want anybody else to have to do that. I mean, we're living in a country that's just too abundant for that. Um, but for us to be able to participate, we need to hear you say something about it. It doesn't need to always come from me, it needs to come from you. Now, there's many years ago, I participated with the county, there was a 4-H program that they had. They received federal money no, government money actually, to create an outreach program. And to uh, Commissioner Cooper's point, outreach was designed for individuals to go to different communities. You had to live in that community because if I showed up to Harlow, they're not going to listen to me. If you showed up to Harlow, they're not going to listen to you. So somebody from Harlow 
was commissioned to come in and be on this board. Somebody local from Beaufort who has a familiar face. Mm -hmm. They went out door to door to let you know what those services are. You know, there was a big whole thing about unwanted pregnancy. We thought it was unwanted, yeah. uh, but they had to think it too. Yeah. So, um, although we go in there with this information, here is where you can get uh, teen pregnancy information, Planned Parenthood information, mm -hmm. if you want to break that vicious cycle, but they have to want to know that's a vicious cycle they need to break. So it's all knowing about that community too. So I'll send somebody down there and says, look, you know what, they're okay with having children at 16. This is what they've done all their lives. It's fine. They're taking care of them. Don't need to come down and talk to me about that. However, you want to come down and talk to me about well care and things of that nature and how I can take care of my children, I'll listen to you. So that was a good outreach program to be able to have because unlike what you're saying is if he's going to be doing one thing well, he doesn't need to. It's okay to have people doing the same thing because transportation is an issue. Yeah. If you're in Moorhead City and you're only doing clothes well, because he was, mm -hmm. but now you're doing it. How am I going to get my clothing if I live here in Beaufort or if I live here in Newport? Mm -hmm. It's okay to have duplicate services because transportation is an issue. Mm -hmm. And not everybody can get to A and B by thumbing a ride. I work in healthcare and I get people who can't make their own doctor's appointments. We have they public have transportation, ride. which is a little known secret. Yeah. <laughs> we used to have we used to have public transportation that the hopper that the county had that's no longer you have to pay and it no longer picks you up here and you have to call and you have to call, call ahead. and it is a verification process yeah. because now I've got people calling me saying hey does uh, Mr. or so and so have an appointment with you yes they do they need to be here by 8:30 mm -hmm. well okay now I'll pick them up yeah mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of times you have to be prepared to be there. Uh, on that bus for several hours, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then you have to get up early. Dialysis patients. Yep. I used to run the dialysis program for a medical center. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the dialysis patients, they may not have an appointment until 10 o'clock, but they're being That's picked right. up at 6. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then they're paying three bucks. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. the way. Well, yeah. That's, yeah. That's actually per zone. Coming mm -hmm. from, if you're down east, which I just found this out because we actually have been trying to tackle this yeah, issue. Yeah, we've been yeah. working on the transportation. It's very frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually had the gentleman who or, runs that program. Director for He yeah. came and he was explaining it to us. And it is not a $3 ride. If you have, if you're somewhere, if you're down here past Beaufort going towards down east and you've got to go to Moorhead, it might be $10, $12 mm -hmm. each way. Mm -hmm. They go through zones and they charge them by zones. Mm -hmm. and Another they, hidden secret. Yeah. They used to not be well, that. They, <laughs> no. yeah. It's very frustrating. I started that program in 1987. Yeah. And it was not that way. Yeah. Yeah. You have so many barriers just for transportation mm -hmm. with that one thing. Money. Being able to get on the CCATS itself. Calling to make the appointment. Being able to receive a call. To verify your appointment, and then you're not even talking about the the, the clothes or having a shower if if you are homeless. Right? And they're limited you know? to they can't they can only bring was it two grocery bags yes. if they go to the grocery store they can't go really grocery shopping mm -hmm. they can bring two grocery bags onto the bus with them. Um, it's it's a big problem and if you guys want to come to the homeless coalition and chat that part up. I think that's that's the point of this but right. Yes. Yes. These are the kind of things that. A task force after we let the county the community let you know this is what we need um, we'll talk about it. they'll get in the weeds with this they'll let them let the smart people be smart yeah, yeah. If, like I can imagine I'll be on the uh, I should, I'm just sure, but the things you just now said be not in on the agenda as a presentation you know at a, at a council meeting and then, and then it get, becomes a member it becomes part of public record okay. you know which which um, and then uh, people pick up on it and maybe the newspaper sure. writes something too you know so so we just need to show up at your meetings here and just raise and bring our well, bills well guess who controls the agenda <laughs> 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 how fortunate you guys are what do you need okay. to say, man? <laughs> yeah. there's a classic example right there of a, of a major problem that yeah county commissioner might not have even thought about it being a problem yeah, but, we just, but there should be for example a cap yeah a cap on what you can charge sure. a, a low cap 
Well, he explained to us too that it was no longer funded. It's by grant funded. There's no. It's, it's partly grant funded. Most of it is not county dollars. That's correct. So it's from yeah. federal, some state, teeny bit county. He was explaining to us too that since we reached over seventy thousand people in our county, that uh, that it should be eligible for different grants to allow it to be a free transit system. It but stops. for whatever reason, Bus stops. the county has not pursued that. Um, option, but it should be a free transit because we now have more than 70,000 people in our county. That puts them in a different bracket mm -hmm. so they can get different dollars. Right. Um, but for whatever reason, the county's not going after them. I don't know what the barrier is or if, or if the county just doesn't know. I don't know. Maybe they don't know. Maybe they just don't have the manpower to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, they know because the director of CCAS knows. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, not an there at that meeting, on know. and on, and letting them know, out of sight, out of mind, mm -hmm. is what you want to avoid. Right. So you have to be ever present <coughs> and really diligent about that. If this is what you want to get solved, if you go to one meeting and walk away, yeah. twenty more meetings happen between. We're not going to remember the last thing that you said. <laughs> so um, you have to be there a little bit more often, a little bit more diligent. And it has to be driven by something. They're not going to do it on their own unless there's a need. Or if you're going to show me. Now, 65 may not seem like a lot of numbers. However, there is still a need because everybody in here can tell that story. Whether you can quantify it or not, you can tell that story. So that's what we need to hear. That's just 65 in that encampment. Right. Well, that's throughout the county. That's it's just what county. we have uh, found. Uh, that's yeah, what, right. that's what yeah. a team of four have done. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you're also. And somebody's going to ask how many you're in Beaufort. Yeah. 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 How many of that 65 are in Beaufort? And Commissioner, I want to, in the very beginning, you asked about what people with substance abuse are doing before they get to loads and fishes. Is that what you were answering? Asking? Well, I was asking what can they do. I, I have ran into uh, one gentleman. I, he gave me his card, and I was able to pass that on to a, to one of the homeless people that I uh, ran into in, uh, while I was out campaigning. Uh, but unfortunately, um, uh, he got picked up for some reason or another, and he's just now. Uh, he don't have to worry about being out in the elements because he's got the state. He's got county provided. 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 He's got He's making clean. his mother was making his mother happy. Absolutely, I she know exactly where he is. who you're talking about. <laughs> I, I actually helped him get in there. Okay. Um, I want to ask Family Promise something. Real but who, so there are a lot of outside detox facilities that we're able to get civilians or veterans mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. um, and then if a bed's not open at either Loaves and Fishes or Hope. There's a lot of other programs that we can get them referred right. to from those places. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that gentleman is doing very well. We need a county <laughs> detox facility, though. We do not that's have this, county detox. That's what this doctor was talking about. There's one in Jacksonville. I think yeah. that's the closest. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So said, before you can go to Loves and Fishes, you have to go through detox. Yeah. Yeah. And there is no local de I mean, I don't consider Jacksonville local. No. No, but a lot of that money with Trillium has gone to Jacksonville, so that is where we're having to transfer everybody. So even the hospital has created a small area because transportation is not just the issue, is having the bed or the facility open for you. So now we've got to keep you here for five days until a precious opening comes along, mm -hmm. and that may be far and few in between. Mm -hmm. So. To get them there, I mean, the sheriff will take you anywhere you want to go, just about. I mean, they've been very good about that, the sheriff's department has. You mean um, they hold them in the hospital before detox? Yeah, uh, mental issues, detox, you know, they're waiting for a facility for them, so. A detox uh, facility, but not like loaves and fishes facility. No, uh, yeah. Okay. You have something to ask No, I was just going to ask with Family Promise, do, are, do you guys... Do you have a, a working relationship or a contract with Trillium for some of those beds that they can provide mental health services for? No, we don't think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Could I ask why? Uh, um, do, do we we've got you? everything we need. In fact, we're not full. You know, with um, with uh, guests, but we're not full. And it was hard to. Uh, it's hard to get somebody who's drug free. That's the truth. There, I mean, it, I know a good friend that has been advertising for jobs here. Uh, Parker Boats out there. I mean, you make a decent salary, you got the health benefits and things like that. And they can't get the employees because they can't get, they're not going to, they're only going to hire somebody who's drug free. So we just finished our, we have a hundred bed women, women children facility in the high school transformation village. We just built it. Twelve million dollars, zero state and federal funding. It all was funded by the churches in Asheville, North Carolina. Wow. All right? Fifty-two years to build to that, yeah. okay? So, but to your, to your point, what we've done now is we partnered with Via Health, which is our trillium in the West, and we have 10 opioid beds and 12 mental health beds available. It's, it is advantageous to Via because they need beds. It's advantageous to us because they pay for those beds. So it's a force multiplier for us to make money to help operate the facility. By, by, and, and everybody's winning then, right? So I would definitely explore what possibilities you may have with Trillium because A, they may be able to fill your beds a lot quicker mm -hmm. and then be able to pay you for those beds. Um, I got a vision of how we can work, and we can do it right here in Beaufort. We can do it right here in Ash Street Church. Uh, what we would need is money to buy some property, and I'd like to see something like park model trailers or something like that. And you put three or four different locations that'll hold two or three trailers. And if we need four trailers in Moorhead and we've got a vacant, moving over there. If we've got somebody who's got a job in Moorhead and transportation is a problem, because we don't have any jobs here in Beaufort, minimum wage, that's it. Mm -hmm. You cannot live on your own on minimum wage. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it'd be a transition area. And let's say we had three spots here, and Street could watch over them. We've got plenty of support to get them, to help get them to the next level. But that would be a small way to me to start, and I think very affordable. I know good and well that we've got people in this church would give their time to make sure the grass is mowed, make sure the house is clean. Keep an eye on them if drugs enter into them. And it may be, like you say, have one group that, in one section, that there, there are people that are uh, have, have a problem. But it could be a transition area from loads of men from loads and fishes to get them on their own, to help them educate, to help them be trained, uh, you know, to a, to a job that would fit. And, Family Promise needs that transition area. We don't have the funds right now. I'd like to have a half a million dollars. We'd buy that. We'd buy that block there in both in Moorhead, and half a million is a bargain. Well, that's something that all three Lowe's and Fishes, Hope Mission, mm -hmm. and yeah. Family Promise can talk about together to come up with something for a transition once people graduate from that program. That's right. That's, um, that's the ticket. You know, Improving health hospital wide open right yeah. now, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's also a house on 101. It used to be a group home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's um, big common areas, um, big dining room, big kitchen, four bedrooms, could be expanded, 1.35 acres for $225,000. Wow. Oh, that's more of a bargain, right? But if, you know, we have some finances to get to buy property, then it makes it doable for Rand Street and Question who owns, who owns the Pruitt Hospital now? Is that the county? No, Pruitt. Pruitt. No, that's Pruitt. 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 Okay. Right. So right. when the hospital owned it, I mean, when it was 
wasn't Pruitt before, and I can't remember what it was. It was by the county, and then the hospital facilitated that. Now Pruitt's all on their own. And they're actually building that facility, taking it from down east, and putting it into Beaufort. Yep. What so about the old What are they doing east? with this facility down east? That's, that's a good question. That's what I'm asking about. What, so it's not Harbor? I, yeah, right beside Snow yeah. Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. Snow Harbor is not the same. It's right, right beside Snow Harbor. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so from what I have been told, this is not gospel. It mm -hmm. just came from somebody on the commission. That I'll let you know if it's gospel. That's right. That is true. Yeah, let's that they are looking to use that mm -hmm. as a facility for transitioning there you go. and homelessness. Now that's something we would need to push as a community, as a group, and, that's and also, get in their ear. That's also down east, right? Yes, it is. But it, the it, takes, it protects your taxpayers. Yeah. yeah. The population down there, uh, where are they going? I, my thinking is if the transition where they're going to transition to it needs to be pretty close in that vicinity you know if you're working in Beaufort or if you're working in Moorhead you know have something there in the, but a detox center I, I can see that yeah, you know, I, you know well, well, that, well, with that well some detox centers provide transportation that's what I was getting ready to say you know working with the sea cats if we can if that facility is provided not saying that it will be but if that facility is provided we work with sea cats work with sea cats to have it set up to have that transportation to Moorhead to Beaufort for work and then have it set up to bring back. That can be something that works for the community. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. You know, and I get how far away it is. I worked at the Marine Corps base down there for a long time. Um, and it is a long ways down there. But it also it gives you the opportunity to set it up to have college there. That facility is big. You can have education while they are there. Mm -hmm. You can have counseling after the fact there. You can have everything in one facility That's right. and work it out and save a lot of money and also say it work together with everybody in the community to make that happen. Will and it work? Yeah. And that's uh, what we've done with two of our facilities. It's you show up, you get mental health, you show up, you get substance yeah. use, whether it be through Viat or whatever. You show up, we have the community colleges pumping certifications that meets the industry needs to get them into a livable wage job. Mm -hmm. We have transportation to get them to and from work. So to your point, we don't want to the, you can paint the big picture and have a grandiose vision all we want. But you got to start somewhere, and you got to get the right people in the room, start having those conversations, and then putting those pieces together. What's yes. going on with the um, old the nursing home that's next to the Basque Hotel? Isn't that empty? The old Harbor View. It's still open. It's still operational. There's people oh, that live in there. Yeah. Oh, I thought they had closed that. The Basque Hotel was independent living, and then you had the nursing home next right. to that. Mm. Yeah. As far as I know, they're still there. <laughs> I thought Arbor the nursing home had closed. Yeah, I've been had it as a charge. Harbor View. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was called Harbor View, right? It was called yeah. Harbor View. Yeah. Well, still is it there. Mm. But yeah, we had a patient transport from there a couple months ago, so I'm okay. saying. Oh. All right, well, I thought they had closed the I nursing home part of it. We haven't had anybody there. I well, think the nursing home part is closed, didn't it? Harbor yeah, we thought that's what we were talking team. about. She said no. But you have you've had people go over there. Yeah. So where is peer recovery in this now? Are they still operational? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The women's club used to do right much. We tried to make them uh, a focus. I mean, people know about them. Nobody knows about mm -hmm. the H of the C Fair right. and Carteret County. Yeah. And we did a. We had a lunch. We invited all the ministers, hand wrote the, hand wrote the letters, and invited the officials and so forth. And the sheriff came because he, you know, he was part of helping with all that. But very, very few people came, and we went to a lot of trouble to, uh, to do that, mm -hmm. to get it recognized by the community and the help that's available through that agency. Now, I think the did the lady pass away that was where she was sick. I don't know if she passed away. No, she's she's still she's still is she? she she just says she retired. She, she did was, retire. Okay. Um, she wasn't. Jimmy, well. Mr. You talking about Mr. Jimmy's mom? 
who pretty much started PRC. Yeah. Bench is local. <laughs> um, so I, I, I'm vice president of the board for PRC. Okay. Oh. Um, so that's why he gets promotions. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Gotta work on that. Um, <laughs> she, she's still around. But she did. Um, yeah, she was the driving force of the women's club, of course. Yeah. Um, but the county has a buy-in in that building now, so I think they're going to be a little, a little bit more invested, mm -hmm. um, just because the county is, I mean, the county owns the building, I believe, and that they are paying for part of the program. Part yeah, of the they were getting funds from somewhere. Mm -hmm. I can't, it's been a while now, I can't really remember. So what are, what is their piece of the pie now? What are, what are they doing other than supporting each other? Well, Peer Recovery Center is exactly what it is. It's, a, you know, peer support. Right for those with substance abuse and mental health. Right. Um, they're going to have four or five peer support specialists that provide that lived experience mm -hmm. to help those in need of recovery. You know, not to tell them what to do, but to share their experience of how it worked for them. Um, so again, they also, transportation then. Yeah. They also you know, have about meetings and all you yeah. know, NAA and all those yeah. other things. There's uh, one, one thing that we haven't talked about today is uh, something I ran across uh, a couple weeks ago that the University of North Carolina Business School is doing a, yeah. doing a study of five counties, including Carteret, mm -hmm. on, on affordable housing. And I have, the, uh, I have an email address if you would like to be interviewed by them. I, I did that with them. And I told them what I knew about you know, some of the statistics here. They were very interested, and uh, that may be something that you want to yeah. uh, chime in on. The Duke Endowment is also um, running a program uh, since third or fourth year now, maybe, of sustainability um, after Florence and stuff down here. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've got uh, like the, the campus magazine, you know, feature it, and they. They're kind of working it out of their out of their brain campus, but you got the UNC has they've got some spaces up in you know one of those buildings down by the college and NC State does too, and um, you know so there could be some good partnerships. Smith Brothers is also out there. They're yeah. looking to do things with uh, resiliency and, and different capacities. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what C. Smith, C. Smith Reynolds, C. Smith Reynolds, Reynolds Foundation. Also. There. The, 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 the state also just released their housing health reports, and uh, across the board, housing has gone up 20% in the last year, which well, makes it very unaffordable. That's a that's just statewide. Um, but for our county, uh, we we went really low on the housing health. Um, it's uh, I can actually I can send out an email for everybody. I think we were at um, what was it? It was like 24% of our county was on the brink of homelessness yep. because the housing costs. Because uh, of the cost of housing. It's and then the wait list for affordable housing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we only have but so many affordable housing communities here. And trying to get, Jen and I try to get our veterans in there all the time. And now that we're able to do the same thing on the civilian side, um, we're doing that. And you get two years is what the wait list is for some of these apartments. Do do? I mean, well, the restaurants are yeah. closed because they can't get work. Affordable housing, affordable yeah. housing is, 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 both is, a, is a very large issue. Mm -hmm. uh, one being is that you have to look at who is your largest uh, uh, employer in the area. Mm -hmm. Okay, Then you scope it out to in terms of Carteret, and I would imagine even in Carteret, you, you're not looking at no major industries that they may have. Uh, further uh, for the north, such as uh, in Graham County, where they have quite a few. Uh, probably in Carteret, you're probably looking at uh, Parker being a, a large employer. <laughs> but how many of those actually are able to afford both of both of these a whole town to afford? I don't think anybody local, unless you own that house from you know generations of four, <laughs> mm. can afford to live no. in Beaufort. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I met with a developer. Uh, I mean, really. I met for talking with a developer on, on Friday when we was talking about affordable housing. He do make some of his places available through voucher mm -hmm. voucher system. You know, but then you look at those that uh Kim that makes more than what his voucher system allowed, mm -hmm. but then 
they make too much to mm -hmm. go into a housing. That's home. right. Because yeah. you got they have to follow the HUD guidelines. Yeah, right. yes. And 30% adjust mm -hmm. monthly income. Right. You're looking at what is it for a single person? Twelve hundred dollars a month. Yeah. It's not much. And then you take a developer who wants to build X number of units. Right. Okay, and then you're going to ask him to take ten percent of those units to make them affordable. But then you have to say, well, what is affordable? Yeah. Correct. What is the driving force to say this is affordable? Affordable is a relative affordable term. term. Affordable yes, term. Yes, yes, that's it. Affordable goes yeah. where the need is. Yeah. So inventory is a big issue. So the county's uh, economic development uh, group has paid someone to do a housing assessment, and that's out there for public consumption. And the lack of inventory all the way around is pretty dismal. So they come up with a ratio as to how much vacancy you should have. You shouldn't sell out everything to the max, which is pretty much where we are. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about affordability, you have to look at that range of individuals that you're hoping to capture. Because if I make eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars a year, three hundred thousand is affordable to me, right? <laughs> so it's all on that economy of scale. So now you're looking at those individuals that were mostly impacted by Florence. The people who had to go to work every day, who still had to work at the hospital, who still had to go to uh, open up the grocery store. All those individuals are that, that group that is marginalized and is taken out of the equation of affordability. Mm -hmm. So as Melvin would say, we'll have developers say, you know, I'm going to build a house and they look happy at me and they'll save $300,000. And I would like time out. <laughs> you know, who are you going to sell that to? You're not looking at selling it to someone here. You're looking to selling it from someone off. Mm -hmm. And that really mixes up your community because then it becomes more centralized to one group and not as inclusive as it needs to operate. Mm -hmm. we, we work on diversity. We work for, you know, everybody needs to be inclusive. I need to see somebody walking a dog in the middle of the day as well as pushing a stroller. Okay, so I need to have some of that. In, in our town, we need to have the young folks and the children and things of that nature. Um, and you know, our schools were supposed to be, well, I think they're our second. I mean, Cherry Point is probably the largest employer, yes. the hospital, yeah. and the school system. But then your teachers can't come. So it's all a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. It's all a vicious circle. Um, and you don't know what comes first, chicken or the egg. But housing is going to be the biggest part. That's very unfortunate, but it's something we need to talk about. Well, what's, yeah. to talk. what's the next step? Yeah. Has anyone heard? <laughs> <laughs> Next step is for, for either Jennifer or to come to a meeting and sit there and tell us, uh, tell, us what, tell us what tell us what we need to do. <laughs> that's, a, that's what the next step is. Has anybody heard that Jared Bay is is thinking about building some affordable housing? Yeah. Anybody heard that? I heard that. Wow. So they got a track. Maybe you tell me. Down one somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and Steel Tank Road. There, the, I think the philosophy is that they need as many tradespeople as they can hire. Yeah. And they have to. They can't find them here, so they advertise out of yeah. state. They will even send you to college uh -huh. to learn the trades that they want. And their whole idea that I understand is to have. Is to have housing that they can uh, bring a trade person in, and it's it's affordable to that person. That's okay. my understanding. So. Yeah, I think it's geared towards their work. Yes, not, yeah, not it's not. Well, the community outside. colleges has that boat building program. I was going to ask them to partner them for them to that. do that. Yeah. Uh, but then there is like the money that they're going to be paid. They still can't live. So although they get the money or to get the education, the pay may not be where it needs to be, so they're like, look, you know, this is hot out here, and this is a lot of work. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a little different than what it is, and next thing you know, they're starting from scratch again. <laughs> I talked to Linwood Parker, who and Parker Marine, this weekend, and, and um, we were talking about a scholarship down east to kids to go to a trade school, welding or whatever. And um, I was talking to him about it, and he said they put a bunch of money in Carter Community College mm -hmm. to have kids learn the boat building. He did not get one employee out of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I mentioned Carter Community College and getting them training, uh, it was kind of... <laughs> <laughs> 
Dang, now, I don't know if that's... Amen. I'm not blaming the car to give you the college and not doing the job. Everybody wants more money. Right. Right. It so may what be the, do? the what, people. What do you, you want people, to think about? Where they come from? Kind of, I think that the mayor's laid out a plan. Yeah. Yeah. If y'all pay attention to her. Yeah, we got to show up to her. Yeah. I think that if enough. Uh, what time is it? What's the date? What's the time? Uh, the board of well, we actually have one coming up this Monday, uh, six o'clock. We are now meeting in person, so that's a blessing in disguise. Can we just show up? Do we need to be on the agenda? There's public comment portions of it, but I think you might be better if you were on the on agenda. agenda. Yeah, get more time. Yes. Okay. I would like to invite invite. The director of family promise. She knows. I think at, over the next. So I mean, that, I mean, that would be. I'm not going to yeah. micromanage that, but you're going to have 15 minutes of fame. So make the best of it. So whoever you need to have at the table to state your case and to make it presentable. Um, we're presenting for the commissioners. Yeah. Would you say? Yeah. Would you say, Mayor, that you know, if if five organizations that support the homeless community was to either be on the agenda or make public comment. Without warrant enough for you to say, mm, we need to do something. Yeah, but it needs to be. But not one well, right? yeah. all in all so the same. Fifteen minutes or over the course of a few. Over the, I would say over the course. Yeah. Of, yeah. It's going to take a little bit. It's going to take a little time. That's yeah. okay. A little reiteration. Yeah. Now the policymakers are your commissioners, right? Yeah. So even if I try that narrative, the commissioners are going to be the policymakers. They'll have to vote on that as well. So they also have email addresses. Yay! So if you want to go ahead, and <laughs> <laughs> you've got a lot of emails coming to my Love to sit down with you. Put it well, out there. Let us know what your needs are, yeah, and then we'll right. respond in kind. But. But if there's anything that we can do to help you guys or in, answer any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Okay. Well, the mayor said about probably, probably April would probably be it in terms of getting on the agenda. Definitely not this coming. Okay. Well, just not this coming Monday. We still we have a <laughs> retreat. <laughs> and then this budget. So budget's over in June. We have to pass a budget in June. So a lot of those meetings will be budget oriented. Um, so I would probably say any time after June. So in the meantime, what you can do in Ann Street is have, why don't you have a couple, two or three or four strategy sessions in mm -hmm. regards to this and invite the community in. Because mm -hmm. then, then when you present to the, to the council, you can say, hey, we've been having these strategy sessions in the community. This is the findings that we've had. And we want to bring this to your attention, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, and, and we could try to come with as much um, of a plan and, and, and ideas and you know and solutions yeah, instead of just right. right. Yeah. This could like, you know, they need to do it more than once. Yeah, yeah. And I think that you, if you do if that, if you want to travel around and put it on to, on would. tour, I would. I don't know how they had us listed in the capacity that we presented for the county commissioners. But we were told we were going to get 10 minutes, I think is what they said. Uh, and, that's and a little different. 10 that, to 15, and we talked for, I understand it's different, but we talked, we ended up talking for like 45 minutes. We can pair okay. that to 10 minutes, to 5 minutes, to 2 minutes, uh -huh. with all sorts of statistics and data and stuff. We'll show you that, you know. But I think you need to start massaging your relationships between the players in this. Yep. And you certainly don't want to be like, okay, Hope and Salvation Army and Ann Street, we're having a meeting on Monday. Okay. Three days from now, and we're and we got this great idea of what we want to do. I You're gonna end up fighting session. before. I would have community <laughs> open community strategy sessions to yeah. talk about this, mm -hmm. and let that happen. Let that build up and say, hey, we think we should take this to the mayor. You should take that to the mayor, and that way it starts, you know, yeah, generating yeah. some of that for you to then say, okay, I've heard enough. Mm -hmm. The council's heard enough. Yeah. We want to create a task force, and this is how we're going to lay it out. And this is how we're going to do it. And now you. You've got structure behind it. Get that and there's ripple teamwork. effect through the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. put, it out, put it out like you did for QPR. Mm -hmm. You know, that you want to do this. Have it, like yeah. Brandon said. Cool. Have everybody well, come together. I think it's important to note, too, what the mayor said earlier. All of our communities are very different. I know after Florence, I did a lot of work down in North River, and you talk about trying to break into a neighborhood, and you're the white girl showing up, going, I'm going here to help all y'all. <laughs> and they're like, girl, what are you doing down here? Um, that took me months uh, to get in, and I think right. it's important to note that all of those communities in Down East, too, it's the same. They don't like outsiders oh, coming no, no, in. No. If we can get people from those communities, on board and to come in and I know there's people in North River working there's people in South River but they're working in their own communities yeah. if we could get those 
those leaders to show up to these meetings yeah. and get the buy-in for their community, mm -hmm. okay, that will make the world be different. Yeah. yeah, if you can show that the people from down east are bought in, I think that that's going to make it. It's going to reflect on the people in Moorhead City to, to follow suit. I think that could be helpful. Because they're going to be thinking, wow, dang, down east is willing to come to the table. You know, we should too. Right. You, you're going to have to have buy-in between the power players here, I think. Uh, I just, I'll be waiting for your call. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. I'm all the outsider, so I wish you guys the best. All, all of this, all of this. Let's, uh, how about if we close? Let me say one. Julius. Let me say one. Thing. Okay, Curtis. We got to consider the political atmosphere, and I got a dose of it this weekend. When I approached the, the chairman of the board of the county commissioner facility with one of our pamphlets to invite him. To come to last night's meeting and, and to this. And he closed, there are no county funds uh, right. for, for that available. Okay. Yeah. So that that was that kind of gave me a total. And I know some of the county commissioners mm -hmm. and they would say this is a you know, we're a bunch of liberal yep. we're a bunch Don't of liberal. Go there, Chuck. We know you're not liberal. Trying to help the trying to help the homeless. <laughs> yeah. 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 When you're okay. outside out of mind, Taylor, will you it's a different picture. <laughs> I will. As I think about what we're doing, you guys, I, I think about how um, how thankful I am to, to see what we're, <laughs> what we're doing and uh, see what God is doing uh, in this community and um, how this whole matter is something the world is paying attention to when they watch the news right now. Uh, with, when you talk about refugees and um, you know out of Ukraine uh, people um, uh, and homelessness, you know, uh, as a, as a as a, a new um, way of life for so many people, and um, so to think then of all that and then bring it down to the local and to say that you know it's all that each life uh, is is so important. Each one, each person's um, livelihood. Is uh, and, their, and their personhood is really important, and so blessings to every one of y'all for all, how y'all honor um, people's personhood and their, their the image of God in them uh, as um, as you as you kind of think about them. And um, so let's go to God. Thank you for this time. Uh, we thank you for the uh, uh, the relationships that are uh, forged in love. Uh, for our community uh, and our, our town, our county, our state, uh, our nation, and uh, for uh, we pray for uh, those who are uh, shelter insecure uh, here and uh, around the world. Uh, but uh, we ask that you will open our hearts and eyes uh, and ears to, uh, to, to see what you are doing and to, to come along and be part of it wherever it is. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.